Mosaic Stadium at Taylor Field. The ramps and stairs, those colored seats, the sunny side, the shady side. After eight decades under the heat of the Saskatchewan summer sun and amid our harsh prairie winter, the roar of the crowd has gone quiet here for good. This stadium and its treasured Taylor Field have hosted fans and rivals, heart pounding victories and devastating defeats. Over the next half hour, we'll revisit some favorite memories from people who have lived out some extraordinary moments here. A place where millions have shared slices of their lives and will take with them memories that will last long after this stadium is gone. It is here at 1910 Piffles Taylor Way where there have been cheers and jeers, friends and families, first games and final games, practices and game days, passionate moments, proud moments, tough moments. It's more than a building. It's the house that has staged millions of memories for fans and players. In the 1920s, a soccer field, Park Hughes, and a baseball diamond, Park De Young, were reconfigured to accommodate both baseball and football fans on this very spot. The first permanent grandstand was built here in the 30s. A then fledgling football club started to grow and this stadium grew with it. In 1947, it was named Taylor Field in honor of Piffles Taylor, who had recently died. He was instrumental in building a football club that thousands now proudly boast allegiance to. The stadium name changed again in 2006 when the Mosaic Company bought the naming rights. The stadium was upgraded, a patchwork of the old and new. Despite the upgrades, leaving the old stadium was long overdue, according to CFL legend and Grey Cup champion George Reed. He started playing for the Rough Riders in 1963 at Taylor Field and says it was outdated then. The thing that has to stand out is uh, when we came back, when we had lost to Calgary 35 to 6 or whatever it was, and we came back and we were able to beat uh, Calgary in a two-game total point in the playoffs. Uh, that, was, that seemed to be the spark plug, not only for the football team, but also for the fans, because I can, I can remember when that game started, we probably had maybe 4,000 people uh, in the stadium and we got the ball and we scored uh, the first time we hit the ball we scored and so forth and by halftime people were fighting to try and get into the stadium and so forth and we went on to win the game it was two two game total point 48 to 47. For me um, I probably spent 30 years of my life coming to this building. Most know Al Ford for his 11 years as a player with the Riders, winning a Grey Cup in 1966 and again in 1989 as the Riders general manager. But his time at Taylor Field started when he was just a boy. I started here as a minor football league player when I was probably 11 or 12 years old. Played little league baseball over in the far corner over there. They used to roll stands back and had a baseball diamond there. And and I think we played a provincial championship here, so. Ford's career at Taylor Field didn't end with baseball or a provincial championship. In fact, it was only the beginning. Here he shares his two favorite mosaic memories. I say there's two. There's one, I think, as a young kid growing up here in Regina and uh, finished playing high school football here and then never dreamed that, that you know, five years later I'd be playing professional football here. Um, so I think my memory of being introduced the first time here at Taylor Field uh, with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders was, was really big. And I think the next, the next memory that was equal to that was in 89 when we came back here after winning the Grey Cup. We came the next day and had the big homecoming here with, I don't know, for 15, 20,000 people on a cold winter night. And, uh, it was uh, the whole organization wasn't feeling any pain after winning the Grey Cup, so it was wonderful to share that with the fans. Ryder fans had to enjoy the team's first three Grey Cup championships in other CFL cities, 1966 in Vancouver, 1989 and 2007 in Toronto. But then came 2013. Regina, the host city, the 11 and seven Saskatchewan Rough Riders lived out the dream, winning the Grey Cup on home turf. It's a memory Ryder fans will never forget, winning the Grey Cup at home. That was uh, the most heart-wrenching experience of my life. Um, in the last five minutes of the game, um, I did nothing but cry um, because I knew we were going to win. And uh, to win the Grey Cup on this turf and in this stadium, 
was completely emotional for me. Um, there are pictures out there of me doing some really ugly crying, and I even had the guys behind me cry um, because it was just that special. I really, really wanted to submit my legacy here in Saskatchewan, and that and that meant winning a Grey Cup here at home. So le the week leading up, it was wonderful. I mean, you could see the fans from all over Canada coming in. Uh, you know, the atmosphere in this city was just amazing the week leading up. Of course, it was cold, but, uh, you know, us as a team, we didn't feel any of that because it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. And, uh, you know, once the game came, we jumped out on Hamilton. Uh, you know, everyone says that they want that fourth quarter comeback. You're down by three or, or four points going into the last drive. Not me. I was totally fine with the blowout win. Uh, you know, it, it made that fourth quarter much easier to deal with stress-wise. And uh, it was just the most special moment of my football career, winning the Grey Cup first and foremost, but doing it here in front of the best fans in Canada just made it that much, uh, you know, that much more special. You did it, baby! The 2013 Grey Cup Championship is one of the greatest moments to play out at this stadium, a top shared memory by thousands. It is my pleasure to present the 101st Grey Cup to your hometown, Saskatchewan. But ask 1989 Grey Cup champion Glenn Suter for his personal favorite, and he'll take you back to a moment before he ever put on the number 27 for the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. The first time I actually got off the plane in Regina when I was drafted in 1984, and I came to the stadium to wrap up my contract and get it signed and get ready to go to training camp in Saskatoon. I remember seeing the stadium from uh, the outside and just, you know, basically getting emotional because it, it had been a dream of mine for so long to play pro football that I thought, you know, if, if I could just play one game, just one game in that stadium, and I was looking at it from the outside at that point, um, it would just be a dream come true. And I thought of uh, Ron Lan Lancaster, the late Ron Lancaster, and, and George Reed, and the great history in this building. And I got kind of all by myself. I'm going to have to cash in my man card because I got a little emotional looking at the stadium as a young kid with this dream to play here. I mean, the Sacramento Gold Miner game, where here in Mosaic they had standing room only all the way around the field. So it wasn't just full stands, it was full field. And after we won a shootout game against David Archer in Sacramento, the crowd just came on the field and you felt like a rock star. And it was so cool to have all those Rider fans and Rider Nation right close and signing autographs. So there'll be a lot of those individual memories, but it is time to move to the new building. It's state-of-the-art. It's going to be fantastic fan experience. So it's time, and that's why I guess there's a little mixed emotion. Uh, I remember uh, one of the best memories, uh, I was on the east side, and uh, 2007, Kerry Joseph ran back and got that big touchdown to win against the Bombers there, and it was amazing. And later on, a couple months later, we won the Grey Cup. So I think that definitely turned the season. It was amazing. The whole place just went absolutely nuts. So. I think the most fun I ever had at Mosaic Stadium was probably 94 uh, when David Archer comes in with the Sacramento Gold Miners at the time and the place was just packed to the roof and we had Hemroy Hill going there too, right? So fans were in the end zones and close game, we win the game, fans flood the field and uh, I'll never forget it because hey, it was an American team that we were watching at Mosaic Stadium. The place was just electric that night, and it was such a close game. That's my favorite Mosaic moment. Boy, I've been a season ticket holder for close to 40 years, so there's lots. But uh, I think of uh, Kenny Clark's uh, field goal when Ridgeway was knocked out of the game way back when. Uh, some record-setting field goals that were kicked, uh, a little bit wind-assisted, of course. And who can uh, forget, of course, the 2013 Grey Cup. Probably the 07 Labor Day game. Kerry Joseph running it in from 28 yards with less than a minute left. It was awesome to be there. See the classic 2013 whole Grey Cup whole win. And um, I don't know, I can't really choose. Like everyone's been memorable and I'll always remember every game at Mosaic Stadium and now I'm excited to make some memories of the new one. Uh, a few years ago when we beat Winnipeg like 55 to nothing. Our favorite mosaic memory is always when we come with family and we're with our son and daughter-in-law today. We drove out from Vernon to come to the game. So 
it's a, it's a great day. Oh, no bad memories of the stadium. I think we're gonna miss it no matter what everyone says about it. It's a great place. Coming with friends, of course, Grey Cup. When we won, that was the epitome. That was absolutely awesome to be here in November and watch our team win and then go march the Green Mile. Definitely the 2013 Grey Cup. Oh, it was magical. I actually brought my mom with me. We, we, I was able to get a free ticket and I brought her with me and it just, it, it just made everything come together and the atmosphere, it, it was amazing. Like the second half was a blur just because of, of, of the fans. Like we had so much fun in the stands, it was unbelievable. Well, you'd have to go the easy one, winning the Grey Cup in 2013. It was like minus 75 degrees Celsius all week long, going at all the parties. Game day, it warms up about 75 degrees, up to about zero. That was an easy one. That was an obvious one. A couple weeks prior, when Gary and beat the BC Lions in the West Semi, that was a pretty good deal too. Uh, well, I'd have to say, when I first got season tickets here, uh, I took my dad to the home opener first time. That was probably my best mosaic moment, and he's been going ever since. It's a tra tradition to take my dad to the home opener. I'm Ernie Afghanis, welcoming you from Taylor Field in Regina. It's a very cold, brutal, wintry afternoon here in Regina. The temperature is three above, but the winds are from the north at about 25 miles an hour, which gives us a wind chill of 35 below zero. And this is a Western final game, and the winner will go against the Montreal Alouettes in the Grey Cup next Saturday. But both these teams, battered and bruised, are not thinking about that game because they must play each other for another 60 minutes possibly the worst conditions ever in a Western Conference Final. Nothing happens outside in Saskatchewan without the weather being a factor. Saskatchewan is windy and Taylor Field is often considered to be the windiest CFL stadium. Maybe that's why four of the longest CFL field goals were kicked at this stadium. For longtime Rider fan and Saskatchewan Rough Riders Communications Director Ryan Pollock, his memories center as much around battling the elements as watching the drama unfold on the field. Going back to another memory of, uh, you know, rainstorm power outage uh, in 2006 and finally getting into the place and Winnipeg kicking off the ball and Corey Holmes returning the opening touch or opening kickoff of the season back for a touchdown. And, you know, it was a, it was, I remember sitting outside the stadium waiting and waiting and wondering if we were even going to be able to get in to play or watch the game. Um, and then it turns into a, a great uh, memory like that. The weather, the endless ramps, the washrooms, all things people love to hate about this place. There have been upgrades over the years. In 2005, there was some sprucing up of the washrooms, concessions and seats, a new sound system, and the Maxtron was installed. In 2006, a VIP deck and stands were added in the south end zone. And then in 2007, the Astro turf was scrapped in favor of field turf. More seats were added in 2008. Then in 2012, the Riders announced a legacy project which put millions into renovations to prepare to host the 101st Grey Cup here. New video screens were added along with more seats that expanded the stadium's seating capacity to over 33,000. It has come a long way from its humble beginnings. When the team originally moved over to this location, become its permanent location in 1921, um, it was just uh, just stands and, and it became um, the permanent structure in the 1940s and, and began to grow as a stadium. But you can definitely look around and, and see its wear and tear and see a little bit of its life. And uh, obviously everything's still structurally sound, but uh, you can definitely tell that, it, that it's lived a good life. Anything on the west side um, has to be reached by the ramps and upwards of uh, 17 to 19 total um, flights or ramps uh, heading up to the upper deck is a lot of walking. It's met the fa our fans' uh, uh, desires on game day, but, uh, um, but you can tell that it's it maybe not be the most uh, cosmetic friendly place. The thing, the thing I'm going to miss most about it is just the different colors of the sections. I mean, it's, it's a it's something that you don't get to see a lot of, especially coming from the States. You don't see, uh, you know, just the different colors, different aspects, different things. Like you, you don't get a chance to see that. So uh, it's definitely 
the most memorable thing about the stadium. I would love to see that, you know, at the new mosaic, but of course everything is going to be greened out in there. So, but uh, this is what makes it unique. It's just, it's just a unique, unique stadium in itself. You know, this is a very intimate place, intimate setting, and uh, it's going to be missed. You know, everyone has grown accustomed to, you know, this place. Their seats have been the same for numerous years. Uh, you know, it's the first thing you see when you're coming into town on an airplane. Uh, it's just a special place. When we return, we go inside that new stadium. Before the new stadium was built, there was a lot of rumor and speculation about what it would look like, who would pay for, could it even come together? Well, we got some of those answers when a big announcement was made, where else but right here at the historic stadium. On July 14, 2012, the plan to build the new state-of-the-art stadium was announced. We will begin construction on a new 33,000 open-air stadium. The announcement put an end to the discussion over whether a new stadium should have a roof. It wouldn't, but it was billed as being roof ready. The price tag was pegged at $278 million and adding a roof would cost too much. It was built at Evraz Place, not far from the historic stadium. Construction started in June of 2014 by digging out 110 Olympic sized swimming pools of dirt. The bulk of the construction of the new Mosaic Stadium came together over the course of the next two years. In the fall of 2016, the University of Regina Rams and the University of Saskatchewan Huskies played in the first game on the new turf, a test event that showed off what sets the new stadium apart, certainly from the historic stadium, but also bests many others in the country. Rod, this is a colorful room. Tell me where we are right now. So we're in the GA Lounge or the uh, Harvard 620 Studio. Um, so this space is intended for persons, uh, anybody that has a ticket for, a, for an event in here, this is an opportunity for them to come in and enjoy, uh, enjoy a space uh, away from their seats, away from uh, any of the activity out in the bowl. So it's uh, capable of holding 500 people stand up and, uh, or sit down and over 700 stand up. So. But it's also a space that's available to the general public uh, the, any time the stadium is not used. So weddings, birthday parties, those types of things, are, it's available for them. We're on the uh, 500 level on the west side, so it's uh, just behind us, I think, is the best view in the building. It gives you a great view of the space, the entire space. It gives you a great view of the shape of the roof and uh, the, the changes of the heights on the, on the opposite side. So some of the things that were key to us and important to us were fan accommodation, uh, but also just sort of the venue itself. What can we do to make it the best we can? So some of that included things like uh, the sunken bowl. So we're 10 meters down in this building. So uh, the main concourse is at grade with the rest of the space around us, but the playing field is 10 meters down. So that's over 30 feet. The other thing was a 360 degree concourse. So we wanted, uh, we wanted this to be a, a venue that the community can move around in and, and, sh and see each other. Old Stadium, you were on the east side and the, or the west side, you didn't get to see a friend until later on. This space, you can walk around the entire main concourse. Uh, we've got viewing areas uh, at each of the main gates and at the ends and in the middle where you can just congregate and, and actually just get together for a few minutes and move on. The, the seating itself, Old Mosaic Stadium, the benches were basically 18 inches on center for, for a spectator. The uh, general mission seating here is 20 inches on center. Um, another, another huge feature that we believe is a strong one is 70% uh, of the seats are accessible from that main concourse without going into the stairwells or the ramps or the elevators. So you can, uh, when you put almost three quarters of the people into their spaces without having to use the, sort of the vertical transportation elements, that's, that's pretty cool. The, uh, the functionality of the roof is obviously just to keep, to keep the elements off you a little bit. So it covers approximately 50% of the 50% of the seats when you have a drip line, so ra rain falling straight down. Doesn't happen a lot in Saskatchewan, Regina, but that's the that's the design. But it's also intended to help manage the wind a little bit. So during the, during design, we actually challenged the design team to do some things with the roof that help to manage the wind. So it's about 33,100 is the uh, is the number that's uh, that's produced by the uh, design team. So that's the seating and also the, uh, the standing room section in the south end. But that standing room area is also the, the future expansion opportunities for Grey Cup. So, so you can really put a, a bowl in that whole south end. Uh, so the capacity would get up to approximately 40,000. Field level, Rod, this is where the action happens. What makes this special? Uh, what makes this special is we're 10 meters down. We have the, uh, we have the roof covering us partially. 
We, uh, I don't know what the wind speed is today, but you're not really feeling any wind down here, are you? No, none. So this 10, 10 meters down really is helpful that way, and the wind's coming from the right direction today, so it, that, that all the planning that's gone into sort of wind management works for us. The other thing is just the field of play itself. It's, uh, it's a, you know, last year it was the top of the line, brand new field turf uh, Revolution 360, so it's their best product. Uh, when it was installed last year, ourselves and two NFL teams were the only ones that had it on their playing field. So um, what, what they try to do is, is make sure that, you know, the, the slope of the seating is such that you can see over the person in front of you, the average height size person. So on the sidelines, it's a very gentle slope, but you can still, just with the, with the slope that they have, you can still see the playing field with normal normal sized persons in front of you. When you get to the corners in the end zones, they actually make that steeper. So they, the rake, they call it. Uh, so it's a steeper slope, but it also keeps the, the bowl tighter, keeps, uh, keeps the sight lines closer, and uh, makes the viewing a little bit more enjoyable for everybody. Um, you know, certainly the intent is to give everybody the best viewing uh, opportunity we can. In Old Mosaic Stadium, you know, 27,000 seats were between the goal lines. In, in this environment, we've got more seating in the end zones and the corners uh, and, and behind the end zones, but they're all still very, very good quality seats. You, uh, you'll, you'll enjoy them. <laughs> The facility is for more than football, but the home of the Riders is a definite upgrade. The Rough Riders area in the new stadium covers roughly 67,000 square feet, which includes approximately 48,000 square feet for the football operations department. The team space features a 120 seat auditorium, individual meeting rooms for each position group, a 5,400 square foot training facility, a hydrotherapy room with three tubs, a barber shop, and a 4,400 square foot locker room. The second test event at the new stadium was a Brian Adams concert, but stadium gigs in Regina made a name for themselves down the road at the old stadium, where Saskatchewan people proved their passion runs further than football. The Rolling Stones played two incredible sold out shows in October 2006. The first sold out so fast, they quickly added a second show. Neil Donnelly was instrumental in making it happen. When you think about sort of some of the things that I've that I've been involved in, both you know all, all the concerts that were there. I've been part of putting it on, so it's it's pretty gratifying to think from that perspective. Grey Cup, I was the executive director of the Grey Cup as well, and they were all pretty darn successful, and I think for the most part, um, everybody's got pretty great memories from those, so that's pretty special, I'd say. If ever there was a group of football fans to make you feel welcome, it's Ryder fans. Just make sure you're wearing green and white. Thanks for sharing this walk down memory lane.